and Tyler, Jazz. Welcome to the official part of the ceremony here. This is where we, we officially tie the knot. I want to read a few scriptures though to encourage you guys and, and uh, lay this, um, this union on the foundation of God's Word. I think that's important. That's what you guys desire. Oh, oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> it says, out of respect for Christ, be courteously reverent to one another. Wives, understand and support your husbands in ways that show your support for Christ. The husband provides leadership to his wife the way Christ does to his church. Not by domineering, but by cherishing. So just as the church submits to Christ as he exercises such leadership, wives should likewise submit to their husbands. Husbands, go all out in your love for your wives, exactly as Christ did for the church. A love marked by giving, not by getting. Christ's love makes the church whole. His words evoke her beauty. Everything he does and says is designed to bring out the best of her, dressing her in dazzling white silk, radiant with holiness. And that is how husbands ought to love their wives. They're really doing themselves a favor, since they're already one in marriage. No one abuses his own body, does he? No, he feeds and pampers it. That's how Christ treats us, the church, since we are part of his body. And this is why a man leaves father and mother and cherishes his wife. No longer two, they become one flesh. This is a huge mystery, and I don't pretend to understand it all. What is clearest to me is the way Christ treats the church. And this provides a good picture of how each husband is to treat his wife, loving himself in loving her, and how each wife is to honor her husband. You guys have great passion, love for one another. And, and I want to give you, based on God's word, a few, just a few tips on how to keep your passion alive beyond the honeymoon years. Um, it takes work. Marriage does take work. The first one is the passion for significance. And that is every person wants to feel special. In the scriptures here, verse 23, I love this. It says, husbands provide leadership to his wife the way Christ does to his church, not by domineering, but by cherishing. That word cherish means to adore, to appreciate, to honor, to safeguard. How you, your, your wife, your, she wants to feel special in your life. She wants to know she is valued. And the why, it says in verse 21, it says, Wives, understand and support your husband. And, and that's not it. That's actually, she has not a difficult task to understand a man. Men are very simple creatures. <laughs> the next passion is the passion for security. That's where we want to feel secure. I want to know that I am secure and if we're not careful we could easily slip into this rut that many married people find themselves in where their homes become a disaster zone where it's not a place of security it's not a place of safety anymore i've been into some homes you guys some married families where it should have said hard hat zone as you entered in because it just it was a disaster zone it was difficult your home needs to be a place of safety a place that you that is secure it is it is a refuge for you both to run to so many people they gird up they do their devotion and they go out into the world and they do their job and and they get all their armor on but right before they enter their home they take all their armor off the armor of god and they step into their home and they allow the enemy to beat them up and to have his way in their home third passion is the passion for intimacy i want to know that i'm loved i love how this says it says go all out in your love exactly how Christ did for the church, a love marked by giving, not by getting. Man, if you go all out, hey, Tyler, go all out in your love for jazz. Like, leave nothing behind. Like, like just everything you have, your whole heart, the, the best marriages are two servants serving each other. That's the best marriage, where you're just going, jazz, go all out in your love. Don't leave anything back. Don't hold anything of yourself back. Just go all out, and I promise you, if it's a love marked by, by, by giving, not by getting, that's the Christ-like kind of love. It's the passion for intimacy. The fourth one is a passion for success. I want to be acknowledged and affirmed. It says that everything the husband does and says is designed to bring out the best in her. You don't, you don't, your wife doesn't need you to be the criticizer. She needs you to be the encourager. Same thing for you, you're to evoke each other's best. They're really doing themselves a favor since they're already one, he says, one in marriage. And the last passion is the passion for spirituality, which says I want to count for God and for eternity. That the, the third cord, the third strand, the third person, the triune figure in this marriage is, is God. He's at the center of it. Psalm 139 says that he scheduled that every day of my life before I began to breathe. And every day was recorded 
in his book. If you guys want to have a marriage that lasts, that stands the test of time, um, beyond the honeymoon seasons, beyond every, every hilltop experience and valley that life has, you're gonna have to intentionally keep the passion alive. And it sometimes it's beyond what you feel, it's what you choose, okay? Now the exchanging of your vows, <laughs> you have some vows you prepared. Tyler, what are the vows that you would like to share with your spouse today? I, Tyler, take you, Jasmine, to be my wife, and I promise before God and these witnesses to be your husband. I promise to love you as Christ loved the church. I promise to always be there for you through times of happiness and through times of trials. I promise to be the man that God has called me to be, and through the gifts that he has bestowed upon me, I will provide for you and to be the best that I can be. I promise to be God-fearing, hardworking, gentle-hearted, and a lover to you. I promise that as long as I live, my number one goal is to always point you to put your fo focus on God and to fall more in love with Him. I love you and I'm so honored that Christ chose me to be the man for you. I promise to always eat Oreos and M&Ms with you, regardless of what time of day it is. Now just because today we are becoming one in marriage does not mean I will stop fighting for you. Oh no, in fact, I'm going to fight for you like the Green Bay offensive line fought to protect, to protect Aaron Rodgers while he was getting ready to throw a 61-yard Hail Mary <laughs> down the field to a wide-open Richard Rodgers in the front of the end zone to score the walk-off touchdown to make a 20-point comeback against one of the longest and most historical NFC North rivalries with no time on the clock. <laughs> and lastly, I promise to prove to you why I think I love you more. <laughs> I love you, Jasmine. <laughs> Tyler, today I stand before you and most importantly God, taking you to be my husband. I've dreamed of this day and I still can't believe how God has surpassed my every desire when it comes to the man you are. So from this day forward, I promise to respect the man in you. I promise to empower you to do the things that you dream. I promise to be your biggest fan and your best friend. I promise to always give you back rubs and I promise to try my best. <laughs> to keep the M&M jar full. <laughs> I promise to live out our marriage as a gift, as an adventure and a gift God has given us. I promise to always be passionate, to passionately fight with you and to passionately love you. I promise to be faithful in times of trial and to celebrate in times of joy. I promise to give you grace and to fight for your heart with persistence like Jesus has fought for mine. I promise to come alongside you, to support you as a leader, of our family and to follow wherever God may lead. I promise to pray for you and always point you to Jesus the best that I can with humility, patience, and compassion. I cannot be more blessed to call you mine for the rest of my life. I love you. I love you. And Tyler, as you place the ring on Jasmine's finger, her left finger, please repeat after me. I give you this ring to wear. I give you this ring to wear as a symbol of my abiding love. As a symbol of my abiding love. My eternal faith. My eternal faith. And my undying devotion. And my undying devotion. It's an outward re reminder. It's an outward reminder of our inner unity. Of our inner unity. Jasmine, as you place the ring on Tyler's finger, please repeat after me. I give you this ring to wear. I give you this ring to wear as a symbol of my abiding love. As a symbol of my abiding. My eternal, faith my eternal faith and my undying devotion. And my undying devotion. It's, an outward reminder it's an outward reminder of our inner unity. Our inner unity. <laughs> and now by the power vested in me as a, uh, by Christ and a, a minister of the gospel, I now pronounce you husband and wife. <laughs> Tyler, you may kiss your bride. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Baby! <laughs> you did it! <laughs> I'm married! <laughs> I love you. I love you too. So, can I be the first to also present to this little company? <laughs> Tyler and Jasmine Dewey, you guys check them out. <laughs> Congratulations, you guys. Thank you so much. You're so welcome, man. I appreciate it. It was an honor. Here's a story of a, 
of a, a, a man who was just lived honorably before God. And uh, he was walking along the beach and, and man, he was just righteous man. And God was so pleased with, with his life. He kind of audibly spoke to him um, on the beach and he says, my son, you know, I, I'm so pleased with, with your life and how you honor me with, with, with your life. Ask whatever you wish and it'll be granted for you. And he says, wow, wow. he's just amazed. And he says, wow, okay. Um, well, God, I, I, I really want to understand women. Help me to understand it. Just that's a mystery I haven't figured out yet. And uh, actually before that, he says, he says, no, he says, hey, God, I hate, I, I, I don't like to um, uh, uh, fly and I don't like boats. So, so make, me a, make me a highway all the way to Hawaii. I want to visit Hawaii and I can't visit Hawaii. So, so, so God says, you don't understand what you're asking. Um, you know, the, I would have to like reorient the whole earth and the waves and like the, the pillars alone would have to be, he says, you don't understand what you're asking. Ask something else. That's just, that's too <laughs> difficult. So he says, then he says, okay, God, I want to understand women. That's the mystery. I don't, I, I just want to. And then God says, okay, do you want two lanes or four? <laughs> so that's, 